I want to show you why this is one of the most exciting and beautiful formulas that you will look at in pre-university physics. If you found it hard to derive, then hang around because I've got lots of tips and tricks to help you that I've picked up over 20 years of teaching. We start by imagining a perfect cube where all the sides are of length L. And what we're going to do is take one of those particles and allow it to only move in the x direction at a constant speed. This means that as it collides with the orange wall, the momentum is mu. After it leaves the wall, when the collision is over, its momentum is minus mu because its speed is now in the opposite direction, or its velocity, I guess I should say. Change of momentum will therefore be the final momentum minus the initial, which in this case is minus 2 mu. Between each collision with the orange wall, the distance that the particle is going to travel will be 2 times L, from the orange wall to the other side and back again. Now we know that speed is distance over time, and rearranging that we can say therefore that the time to cover that distance is going to be 2L over U. This next bit is something that people usually find quite tricky. It can help to remember that frequency is 1 over period. Therefore, if we know the time between collisions, if we flip that over and do the inverse, that will give us the number of collisions in one second. In other words, the number of collisions in one second is going to be 1 over t, which equals u over 2l. Given that we have the momentum change in one collision and the number of collisions in one second, we can get the momentum change in one second, which works out as minus m u squared over l. Undoubtedly, you can recall that impulse is equal to force times time, which equals change in momentum. Therefore, we can say change in momentum over change of time is equal to the force. And since delta t equals 1, we can further say that our formula for delta p minus m u squared over l is equal to the force. But what exactly is this force? Because it's negative, it's pointing in the opposite direction to the initial velocity of the ball. And it's therefore the force of the wall on the ball, or particle, I should say. But we're interested in the force of the particle on the wall, which is going to be causing the pressure of the gas on the box. Therefore, because of Newton's third law, we can just say that these two forces are of the same size, but opposite signs. Therefore, this force with a plus instead of a minus is the same as the force that will cause the pressure on the wall of the box. We have worked out a formula to give us the size of the force when one particle strikes the edge of the box. But of course, we don't have one particle, do we? We have lots. So our next step is to move on now and have lots of particles moving at different speeds, u1, u2, u3, flying backwards and forwards, but only in the x direction. And then they're all colliding with the orange wall. It's actually fairly straightforward to work out what the total force would be from all these different particles all travelling along the x direction and colliding with the wall. You just add the force from each one. In other words, mu1 squared over L plus mu2 squared over L plus mu3 squared over L plus dot 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 dot. If we factorise this expression, we find ourselves with f equals m over L open brackets and then all the different speeds squared and added up. Now that's going to keep you busy. To solve this rather significant problem, we're going to introduce something called the mean square speed. As you can see, this is written u for speed, square for square, with a bar over the top to indicate that it's the mean. This mean square speed is worked out by taking all the speeds, squaring them, adding them up, and then dividing by n, where n is the number of particles. In other words, it's just the mean of all the speeds squared. Now we can see that if we take the mean square speed and multiply it by n, then that is going to be equal to the squares of all the individual speeds added up, which was the difficult bit inside the bracket. We can therefore substitute for said difficult bit inside the bracket with mean square speed times n. And this therefore leads us to a nice simple little formula for the force on the wall caused by n particles. And that force is nm mean square speed all divided by L. 
Don't forget that what we're trying to do here is to come up with a formula for the pressure inside a box in terms of how the individual particles are moving. But pressure is equal to force divided by the area. And given that we have a cube here, the area of the orange face is simply L times L or L squared. Therefore, we can say that pressure equals Nm mean square speed divided by L cubed. And of course, L cubed is equal to volume. Therefore, we have volume on the bottom. Rearranging, this leads us to a really simple and powerful formula. Pressure times volume equals N M mean square speed. Well done to you if you're still watching and super well done to you if you understood most of what I was going on about. I find most students take a few goes through this part of the syllabus. We now have a formula that works for particles moving in one direction. So in the next video, we'll generalize this for particles moving in all directions. But don't worry, we've done most of the heavy lifting. So I look forward to seeing you all next time.